Good morning. So nice to see you. Grandpa got to come today, which is a good thing. I haven't seen Grandpa in a while. <laughs> Nothing like calling you out, huh, Howard? <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. We are celebrating Gwen Hansen's affirmation of baptism. She was unable to be with her uh, classmates last Sunday, so we are happy to do that with her and her family this morning and an opportunity for those of us who worship in the early service to uh, support, greet and support and lift up um, one of our young people. So we'll be doing that later in the service. Uh, Special welcome to those of you joining us on Facebook Live this morning. As always, happy to have you with us. We are celebrating Holy Communion later, so please gather your elements and what you might need for that, and please say hi to us as well on, on, in the comments section. That would be great. Announcements for you. Oh, and Linnell is here. Excellent. So I was just going to make sure. Announcements are in your bulletin, and so just invite you to read those. Next Sunday, we will be blessing the quilts. Our quilters wrapped up their work for the year this past week, and so that's something we'll be looking forward to next week. And then I just want to invite Linnell Senden forward. We are, even if the weather doesn't seem like it, summer is just around the corner. And summer means fun days for the first time in a couple of years. Good morning. Excuse me, I haven't started my teacher voice yet. Excuse me. Good morning. As Pastor Trish said, my name is Linnell Senden. I have been a member here at Messiah for 21 years. And I think since the beginning of my membership here, Bob Roth and Beagler got me involved with Fellowship and Rec. And I have had so much fun with Fellowship and Rec that I haven't left. So... Today I'm here to talk about opportunities with uh, Mankato, North Mankato Fun Days. Um, Fellowship and Rec has always been a part of Fun Days and the fun that 
uh, surrounds it. And <clears throat> the, our mission statement, vision, and purpose um, come from the Bible. We have uh, Corinthians, Acts, Matthew, John, that all have inspired our mission, vision, and purpose. I'd like to read that to you. Our mission statement, reaching out, <clears throat> turning our hearts to God, giving ourselves freely and cheerfully. Our vision, to be spirited, growing, and Christ-centered. Purpose, to provide financial and spiritual support to the various activities and events that exhibit our community of fun, fellowship, and recreation. That's where you come in. So it has been a while since we have had a full-fledged fun days. Um, 2019 was the last time we were able to gather and support fun days as a church. Um, the last time Kimberly and Dale Moore were in charge of the Pine Brat Stand, and my husband Jim and I are taking over the leadership this year. So this is where you get involved. You can see when you walked in today, there's a fun, fun, fun days. I mean, not... <laughs> It's, it's, you might, as Pastor Trish mentioned, um, it doesn't feel much like summer right now, but trust me, on July 6th, it will be 90 degrees, humid, and you will have a fun time with your church neighbors at the stand. So the opportunity presents itself for 13-year-olds and above. Um, we start Wednesday night, July 6th, and run through Sunday, July 10th. If you are not someone who would like to work the stand, we have all kinds of behind-the-scenes opportunities. Um, we also have, on Saturday, uh, the parade, and we typically, I'd say historically, probably for the last 15 years, have had a float with the worship band advertising Messiah in this community. So if that is something you'd like to be a part of, you'll be um, seeing information regarding that in the weeks to come. I know you like to mark your calendars and keep track of things, at least I do as a teacher. We are 65 days away from the first day of fun days. So, and I know our calendars fill up, and sometimes after our middle school ministries and Sunday school time is done mid-May, we get very busy with different activities. So this is the opportunity. We wanted to put it up there in front of you starting today. There's also an online sign-up that you'll have access to but we will make sure both the, the paper sign up and online um, dive together. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. If you have any questions, always make sure you call the office. Um, the, the support staff there will help and answer any of your questions. Um, if you don't feel led right now to sign up, I understand you didn't bring your calendars, but you have 64 more days to, <laughs> to plan ahead. So if you have any questions, Please find me. Typically, I'm a, a second worship service member, but you can text me or email me, and the office has my contact information. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And the same thing is true, right? Just those watching online, just send us a Facebook message. We'll be happy to take it. So I invite you to stand as you are able, and we'll begin worship this morning with an Easter liturgy. Empty tomb, risen Lord, abundant catch of fish, signs of new life in Christ. For some it is easy to believe, for others it feels foolish. For most of us, we wonder, we wonder what might be possible. If love can really be the greatest power in the universe, we wonder what might be possible. If love can survive those who try to defeat it, we wonder what might be possible. If love can truly be poured out for the sake of others, we wonder what might be possible. We long for a love such as this, a love that changes things, a love that does the impossible, a love that lives in the present moment and in the hope beyond death. We long for a love such as this, that it might change us, that it might do the impossible in us, that it might live in us now and forever. God, in this time of new life, help us to wonder what love might make possible in us. Amen. We'll continue with our song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. 
the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger, your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like now before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise on and Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And also with you. You may be seated. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. 
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we praise your splendor, your power, your love. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who are traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen a vision of a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from chief of priests to blind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument of whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. You, Lord, with your favor, made me strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Please stand as you are able.
The Holy Gospel according to the 21st chapter of John. Glory to you, O Lord. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they'd gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to them, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I want to invite the kids to come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good All right, we had a couple of great, great, great Bible stories that we just heard. And in the one that I just finished from the Gospel of John, Jesus is out there having breakfast with his disciples. This is the third time he's shown himself to them after the resurrection, after he was raised from the dead. And they're having breakfast. Did you hear what they were having for breakfast? Fish. Fish and bread. Good job. You were listening. Fish and bread. What did you guys have for breakfast? Cereal? What would you have? Cheerios. Cheerios. At first I thought you said pizza. No, Cheerios. What would you get? Pop-Tarts, granola bars. So my question for you today is, what would you have if Jesus was eating with you? Think it would be the same thing? It might be. I brought you some donut holes today. That's what I thought you might have if Jesus was eating with us, you think? I got a napkin for you, too, if you want. There you go. You can take that and pass it to the girls for me, okay? Who knows what we might have had? Eating fish and bread was pretty ordinary kinds of stuff for them. Um, And so you might very well have a donut or Pop-Tart or a granola bar or cereal with Jesus. What do you think you would talk about while you were having breakfast with Jesus? Anything you'd want to ask him? Should we ask the congregation if they got any ideas what they would want to talk about? What you going to do today, Jesus? I like that one. Right? Can I come along maybe, right, Kyle? Yeah. Yeah. What you going to do today? What do you suppose Jesus would want to talk to you about? 
hard to know. What do you think? He might want to know what you're going to do today, too. He might even ask you like he was asking Peter, do you love me? If so, when he told Peter to keep feeding the sheep, do you know what he was talking about there? Teach the people, bring the good news, serve me. Yep, a shepherd has to take care of the sheep so they can keep on living, and he's asking Peter to do the same thing. So that might be what Jesus would say to you or me, too. We also had Paul. I don't want to forget Paul because that was a great story, too. Paul was heading on the road to Damascus. He was not a nice man at that point. He was not being nice to those early Christians at all. And uh, all of a sudden, there was that bright light and a voice. He didn't get to see Jesus in person like Peter did, but he heard the voice. Saul, why are you doing this to me? He says, is that you, Jesus? Yep. And he told him what he needed to do to get up and go visit somebody. And what we read is for three days, he didn't eat or drink. He was like nervous. He couldn't see. He'd been blinded. He was scared. Yeah, it was like he was starving. I don't think he had an appetite because he didn't know what had happened or what was going to happen. And then Jesus had sent a man whose name was Ananias who came and told Paul all about Jesus and what was happening. And then what we read was suddenly he could see again. And then did you hear what he did? He got up. He had something to eat. You want another one? No? Anybody else need another one? Yeah. He had something to eat and drink. If you were Paul and you hadn't eaten and drank for three days, what do you think you would eat? Anything, anything, whatever they had available, yes. And so there's another story there about eating and drinking and being nourished. There's one more meal we're going to have today. Do you know what that meal is? Communion. Communion, yep. And communion, that's another meal we have to get nourishment, to get strengthened so we can go out and do the things like Peter and Paul did. Good. All right. Thank you guys for coming up and having a little breakfast with me. And we'll see you later. So those of us who like to read books know that an ending can make or break a book, right? A few weeks ago, I was reading a novel, and I kept thinking I should just forget it and put it down. It was so hard to get through because the the topics were those hard topics. It's not a lot of fun to read about. And so it was just hard, and I was struggling through it. But when I finally got to the end of the book, the ending was so amazing, it made like the whole book worthwhile. And then a few books later... I was reading another one, and that one you knew from the very beginning that the main character, the protagonist, was going to be fine. You know, she had all these obstacles to overcome, but she knew it was going to, it was all going her way, and everything would be just fine in the end. And it was, and the author in that case wrapped everything up, tied it with a bow, except for one thing that she left the reader hanging with. And I could not decide if I liked it that way or not. Books end, but stories don't. So in a work of fiction, it's always up to the reader to decide what would have happened next, right? In this case where she left us hanging, I had to decide if the person who was answering the door was going to greet her or push her away is is what was happening in that story. So you always get to decide, even when a book ends, what do you think would have happened next? What happened to Cinderella after she married Prince Charming, right? What happened next? And that's true if you're reading nonfiction as well. When you stop and think about it, the book gets done, but then a new scientific development comes along or a new law is enacted or the president leaves office or the billionaire decides to chase a new uh, philanthropic project. You get the idea. Life, whether it's real or imagined, always goes on even after a book has ended. The biblical story is no exception to that. So what's the Bible, right? We'll do a quick review. We know, of course, it's the story of God and God's people all throughout time. The Bible takes us from the beginning of creation until after the death and resurrection of Jesus and into the early years of the Christian church. 
And all the way along, we hear the stories of God's steadfast love and faithfulness to God's often unruly and wayward people. And when we get to the end of the Bible and we close the book, we could think that that means it's over, but it isn't, of course. As Christians in the year 2022, we are living proof that the story goes on. It's also, I think, important or interesting to note even that the Bible itself, the book itself, has changed over time. And Greg, I apologize, I forgot to talk to you before church, but there's a little video if you click on the next slide that should start up. The Bible is the most widely read book in the history of the world, far outselling any other book, with 3.9 billion copies sold over the past 50 years. Many believe it contains the actual Word of God. But many people don't realize that over the past 2,000 years, this sacred text has changed a great deal. No first edition exists. Well, we have our copies, the first of which were made hundreds of years after the events supposedly took place. For the first 100 to 200 years, copies of the Bible were made by hand, and not by professionals. This led to many errors, omissions, and most importantly, changes. Here are the three biggest. The earliest manuscripts of the Gospel of John did not include Jesus challenging the mob that was about to stone a woman by saying, Let any among you who are without sin cast the first stone. In fact, the story was inserted into the book of John somewhere around 200 to 300 years later. Bill Warren, scholar at the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, told NPR, The early church canonized books and not stories. So when it had authentic stories from Jesus in the oral tradition, they had to find a way to put it in the text. In the Gospel of Mark, we learn about how Jesus rose from the tomb on the third day and appeared to various people, including his disciples. In original manuscripts of Mark, this part of the story is nowhere to be found. Warren says scribes were seeing the other Gospels with resurrection stories, so they felt adding a resurrection story in Mark would round out the text better. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus' dying plea for his executioners to be forgiven, for they know not what they are doing, was not originally intended to describe the actions of the Romans. According to Bart D. Ehrman, the author of Misquoting Jesus, the story behind who changed the Bible and why, in earlier versions it was meant to refer to the Jewish leaders who had sentenced him to death. He told NPR this was a problem for Christians in the 2nd and 3rd centuries, who believed God hadn't forgiven the Jews and still blamed them for killing Jesus. So it was taken out, only to be added centuries later and changed to reference the Romans. As recently as the 1940s, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, we discovered a version of the Old Testament containing alternate versions of various books, including the Book of Samuel. Scholars continue to argue about many aspects of the Bible and how it's changed over the centuries. And then just go ahead and click on the next slide and we should be good. All right, a little bit of tidbit of information, but all of that now brings us to our gospel reading for today. There are many biblical scholars who think that the passage that we heard read this morning is actually an epilogue to the Gospel of John, that this particular passage might have been added later in an order to tie up some of the loose ends that were out there, specifically to answer the question, what happens to those who declared Jesus as their Lord and Savior before the resurrection itself? We get some answers if we look closely at this particular story. We know that the fishermen go back to work. They go back to fishing, but they will soon be fishing for people as well as actual fish. And then we have Jesus passing on to Peter the role of the shepherd. We know that in John, in, in many previous passages, Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd and to those who follow him as his sheep. And he now tells Peter that he needs him to continue to feed those sheep. He needs him to be the shepherd. What's it mean? It means that the story isn't over. It means that even the epilogue that's added on to tie up loose ends, it's still a continuation. It means that it is the story of God and God's people. In that story, it means there is always going to be another chapter. If we keep reading carefully, we realize as well that the Bible is always, first and foremost, all about God and about God's work to save the world. 
Peter and the disciples are a part of that work, just like all the people that we meet in the Bible who are either a part of that work or sometimes obstacles to that work. Paul is an example of that, correct? The story that we heard from Acts this morning in there, Paul is one of those characters who's at first an impediment to God's work of salvation. But after his encounter with the resurrected Christ, he becomes one of the hardest working apostles in God's story. And his work is still impacting disciples 20 centuries later. That's the good news. You see, one of the special aspects of both of these stories is the reminder that God is always willing to try it again. God will start fresh. God is going to keep at the work of calling God's people to the grace and mercy of God's self. These stories are proof of that. They're stories that are proof that God has never given up on God's promise to save the world. And the work is going to happen in ways that are continually new and renewed. In the Gospel of John, Peter gets another chance to work in the kingdom. Not because of what he did or didn't do or said or didn't say. He gets another chance because Jesus offered him a piece of fish served on a platter of forgiveness and grace. And in the case of Paul, well, Jesus used a sense of dramatic first to get his attention, but then offered him an opportunity for transformation through the words of another person. And as we know, Paul took that opportunity and he literally ran with it from one country to another. So that brings us to us. Different people, same storyline. God calls each of us in a whole bunch of different ways to both be drawn to God's self and to work to further the kingdom. It might happen as it does for Gwen today when she publicly affirms her baptism or at the later service when we witness Kale's opportunity to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion for the first time. Or it happens when we invite someone to church, or listen to their story, or we share ours. It might be when we lament with one another personal grief or the pain of the world. Or it might happen when we remind each other how we have seen God at work, especially when we look back. It might be when we say yes to something the pastor asks you to do or when we respond to the stirring in our own heart and act accordingly. It might be that it happens when we listen to that still, small voice within us or to the loud proclamation or encouragement of another person. The ways in which God comes to us and works in us and through us and beyond us are infinite, and we, as God's people, are privileged to be a part of it. So, what will the next chapter be? That's up to you. Just like when we close a book and the reader gets to imagine what happens next, the opportunities that exist for you to be a part of God's story are also endless. So go ahead, tell the story, but also be the story. Amen. We stand as we are able and sing our next song. Touch that soothes and heals the hurt in hands that break a loaf of bread. Steps that walk beside the weary, bearing burdens in the stead. See my hands and feet, said Jesus, love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet, said Jesus, live as ones I died to save. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit ones in need of care. Give the homeless warmth and shelter, Christ will find a welcome there. See my hands and feet, 
said Jesus, love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet, said Jesus, live as ones I died to save. Love and serve without distinction, all earth's people first and least. Know within each act of kindness, hope and wholeness are increased. See my hands and feet, said Jesus, love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet, said Jesus, live as ones I die to save. Hands that beckon little children, bind a wound, prepare a meal. Feet that rush to share good tidings, Christ arisen still reveal. See my hands and feet, said Jesus, love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet, said Jesus. Live as ones I died to save. You may be seated, and I would like to invite Gwen to come forward at this time. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Gwen, one with us in the body of Christ, who is making public affirmation of her baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And Gwen is going to uh, share with us the confirmation verse, Bible verse that she selected. I did Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, welfare, and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Thank you. All right, you want to stay over there by the microphone or you want to come over here by me? It's up to you. You have to talk nice and loud now. Just joking. I'm just kidding. Okay, Gwen, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from if so, say, I renounce them. And I invite all of us to join Gwen as we together confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Gwen, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, say I do and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support this sister and pray for her in her life in Christ? 
We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We are now going to have Gwen come on over to the railing and kneel, and I invite her family to come forward as well. And you can all place your hands on Gwen wherever you can find a piece. And if you can't reach, just put your hand on somebody in front of you as well. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Gwen the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you stand up, Gwen. I'm going to let Mom put the stole on you. We have your confirmation certificate. Mike, I'm going to give that to you. And then, Gwen, I'll let you turn and face the congregation. And together, let us rejoice with Gwen. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And I invite you to give Gwen a sign of your love and affirmation of her with applause. And I'll let you go to that one now. We continue with the prayers of the church. I invite you to stand as you are able. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you have sent all your apostles, beginning with Peter and Paul. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring forth new life in places devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need and give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help. Today we remember especially Ben, Craig, Dave, Earl, and Judy, Nancy, Milt, Dolores, Sharon, and Dan, Millie, Ellie, Arthur, Suzanne, Tom, and Pam, Jerry, Bob, Lois, Jordan, Wanda, and Jess's family, and all those we now name in our hearts. Turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up our young people to know you, love you, and serve you in all that they say and do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another, and then you may be seated as we will receive our offering.
us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The meal has been prepared and everyone is welcome at the table. This morning we will have uh, Gwen come up first and I am going to um, offer her communion and then we are going to commune her family. We're using, for those of you who don't know, this is Gwen's chalice from her first communion days in fourth grade. Fourth grade, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so we'll be using that. And once her family is done, the ushers will be inviting all of you forward. The rest of us are going to, we're continuing to use our prepackaged elements for just a little while longer. And so if, um, as you receive those, if this is new for you, the wafer is on top. Just uh, kind of fold back the first thin film to receive the wafer. And then it's juice that is in the cup that you can just pull back the foil to receive that. And a few waste baskets are scattered around the sanctuary for you to dispose of the waste. Again, all are welcome at the table.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Just uh, before the final blessing, just a couple of notes. Dustin, I'm going to make you come back in here. I didn't know he was coming today, which was really nice of him, Gwen, right? And Mike, I'm going to make you stand. Mike Hansen and Dustin Runkle were the guides for our um, eighth graders, or in Mike's case, guides since they were sixth graders um, as they go through middle school ministries. You may or may not know that every Wednesday when we gather, I've got parents from each that help with each group, especially when we break out into small group time. And they're just there to have fun with the kids. And they both, these two have both done an amazing job with that. And so I just wanted to recognize you both and uh, let you all know of their work uh, on behalf of the kingdom of God. So thank you. Thank you, guys. And then just a personal note, I know that um, many of you have been praying for our family. Um, with our niece, Jess, and uh, she, she's had a very public story um, on the front page and everything. Jess has been battling cancer. That's our nephew's uh, Kyle daughter, but she lost that battle last evening. So I, invite, I encourage you to keep Kyle and those four young children in your prayers. They will need the help of the community going forward. So thank you. Um, receive the blessing. I was debating whether I wanted you to stand one more time or not. I guess it's up to you. (laughs) Receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. And we continue with our sending song, Another Blessing. risen. Christ Christ is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace and tell what God has done. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.